I went to the school of the Holy Ghost. Mm, and on. everything yes. for me is follow the Holy Spirit. Follow the That's, Holy Spirit. I didn't, yes. I tried to get around mm. other ministers and have <laughs> appointments with them and they would get canceled. They weren't interested. Whatever God orders, he pays for. Yep. Yes. Mm. And so whatever God has called you to do, he will provide whatever you need right. to do it. Well, we are excited about getting the new year started off right. One of the things we want to talk about today is, will you answer God's call? Mm -hmm. And if you will answer it, what is it? This is good for me because I just finished writing a book about uh, what is finding God's will for your life. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't think that you find God's will for your life. Mm. I think that's the wrong way to go about it. I think so many people are frustrated mm -hmm. and are trying to find out what God wants them to do. Mm -hmm. And what I believe is that if you make yourself available to God, mm -hmm. you just say, I'm available Amen. for whatever you want me to do, that God will come get you mm -hmm. when he's ready. Mm -hmm. I remember being in a, a church service years ago, and it was Mission Sunday. They talked about missions once a year on Sunday. <laughs> and uh, we sang that song, Here Am I, Send Me. And uh, I thought my little heart would burst. And I just said, God, here I am, send me. And I just, I knew I wanted to serve God. And uh, I didn't even know what all that meant. But when God called me, I was making my bed. Mm -hmm. mm. So I think you just need to go about your ordinary life. And one of the things I think that people do is they, they wait for this one thing that God has called them to do. And what you should do is do whatever's in front of you. Lay your hand to it. I mean, I did everything from clean my pastor's house. Absolutely. To go pass out tracts on the street. Mm -hmm. One summer, I took a bunch of women with me. We put 10,000 gospel tracts under windshields. Wow. wow. And um, if we had work days at church, we'd go do those. Mm -hmm. And then when God was ready to call me to do what I'm doing now, he came and got me. I wasn't trying mm -hmm. to find anything. I was just living my life. And I really want what we say about this today to bring peace to a lot of people because I hate to see people frustrated about what is God's will mm -hmm. for my life. I love that you uh, started there, Miss Joyce, because I think when we hear ca calling in our culture, we usually think vocation or gifting. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well, yeah, that's part of it. But calling is God's mission. Right. And God, from the very beginning, said, you know, from the, the curse in Genesis 3 to glory in Revelation, his calling is to draw, draw people into himself. Right. And when he tells Abraham in Genesis 12, I'm going to bless you so you are a blessing. So I didn't just save you from, I saved you for. I think we've made it too narrow. And I love talking about gifts. And Paul says what he's called you to. So there is a, a gift element to it. But there's a macro element to it that even though you weren't preaching, you were doing exactly what God wanted you to do, putting you know tracks on windshields. And I think... I don't know. Sometimes I think whatever your assignment is, we tend to gravitate toward platform instead of God's pleasure. And I'm like, just because people aren't clapping doesn't mean you aren't smack dab in the middle of your calling right. for that season. Well, Might I be think a lot of change. those years are testing years. Mm -hmm. God great. does test our heart. When I felt like I had really graduated to being in ministry, I taught a home Bible study for five years, mm -hmm. 25 people in my living room floor, and I didn't get paid for that. Right. You know, there was no, there was no money involved and God tests our heart. He tests us to see if our motives are right. And you, you do a lot of things before you get to the place where I'm at now. And I've been doing this 45 years, not 45 minutes. So <laughs> there's a, there's a test of faithfulness and, you know, there's a lot of hidden years, a lot right. of years where you're, right. you have this big dream and, and but you're hidden, nobody knows about it but you. And you know, if you think about Paul, the Apostle Paul and Barnabas, they had been ministering for a long time. And then it says, the Holy Ghost said, separate Paul and Barnabas now for the work to which I had called them. 
So there was a specific call on their life, but they had already been busy doing anything that they could do to share the gospel. So every single person that's a Christian is a minister. That's right. We're called to be God's representatives in the earth. Well, if you feel like you don't have a calling from God, that's inaccurate. We all have a call from God. If you don't know what your calling is, begin by prayer, not only for yourself, but also for other people, because we're all called to pray as intercessors, and we're all called to help people be reconciled unto Christ. However that plays out in your life, that's the way God wants to use you. So make yourself available, open your heart to Him, and trust Him to guide you. I love the Amplified Bible that says that we are God's personal representatives. He is making His appeal to the world through us. That is amazing. So every day you go out, you need to realize that you, you represent God in the way you behave. I think, I think in the way you dress, and I don't mean you have to be all dressed up, but, you know, we need to be clean. We need to be neat. We represent God everywhere that we go. You know, I love that, that the Bible says that we're all called. The word call, you can call somebody or, you know, God, when he first started saying the call word is when he said um, that there be light. He called forth the light in the midst of the darkness. When he, when he calls you, it, there's a purpose in that call. There's a destiny in that call. When he called forth light, well, it's never stopped being light. Right. That was fulfilled, right. right? When he called forth the parting, that was done. There was a destiny. There was a purpose in that call. Mm -hmm. And I think that if we know that we're called, mm -hmm. there is a finished work of destiny and purpose in each one of our lives that we just have to take the faith to step out in. Right. And I love what you were just saying is that uh, of finding your purpose. If we're just, if we just get in and just serve each other, right. we're going to find our right. purpose. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And yeah. out, and out of that, and even though circumstances might change, right. the purpose is to know Him right. and to make Him known. Right. When God calls you, He sets forth a destiny, and the Bible says that all are called. And I believe that you are called. We all have a calling and a destiny, and it's kind of like a river. You can cross the river. You can avoid the river, or you can just jump in the river <laughs> and flow with it. And I believe that's what your call is. Your call is jumping in with both feet, both feet of faith, to be swept down through your calling, your destiny, and your purpose. And God is already has it planned out. It's a finished work that you just get to ride. I think people sit back and they want to have assurance. Right. <laughs> This is what yeah, right. they want. They want all these proofs, right. but you. I always say you got to step out to find out, That's right. and That's right. you can't be afraid, no, because you may make a mistake. But all you have to do, if I've stepped out and it hasn't worked, then I've just stepped back, That's right? And then I've stepped in another direction, right. and. The waters didn't part in the Jordan until the right. until the priests put their foot in it, right. and so you got to put your foot in it, so to speak. Right. You got to, you have to be willing to be wrong to ever find out if you're right. right. And we are way, way, way too fearful mm -hmm. of right. being wrong and what people will think and what they'll say. And right. It it just doesn't matter. I mean, being wrong is part of finding out. Yeah. Right. I what think you're that's supposed it. people to like I think our generation I put all of us in the same generation <laughs> oh, thank you. Um, I appreciate that uh, th there was such a fear about am I in the will of God I mean I I know that I was primarily called to be a singer but unfortunately <laughs> sister Cece over here took my calling yeah. <laughs> you are such a servant that's so I, I, sacrificial. Just, I was humble humble that you laid that Lord. down but even that example sounds so nonsensical because, of course, I was not called to that. Right. Number one, I can't sing. Uh, it's not a blessing to anyone. And, of course, part of whatever Cece is going to do in her life, right. and that's not 
just one thing. Mm -hmm. I think in, in Christianity, sometimes we confuse a career with a calling. Come on. The first thing, yeah. God calls us to himself. That's so right. that's the first right. calling that's is it. that we're called to we're him. Called. And so when you're called to him, you know, I, I was thinking when I was in Pakistan, a lot of those women are not sort of agonizing. I mean, they would be in some places shot dead or killed if they tried to do anything that we're doing. So mm -hmm. their calling is to him. Right. And then in that every day, how can I, number one, be close to you and then Bring be your light there. within right. my context, which right. uh, it's not even that we're asking God what his calling is. We're mm -hmm. scrolling through somebody else's life going, oh, I like I that. Do that. I like That's that. Right. So I want to do that. And everywhere in scripture, uh, Paul says, or, you know, the Lord says, I've called you to this. I, and sometimes that's resulted in death. Mm -hmm. Sometimes right. that's resulted in downward mobility. That's right. Sometimes that's resulted in going where nobody wants to go. Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh. It's like, you know, there's, right. whereas we just think, well, if it's God's calling, it's bigger, it's better, it's yeah. flashier. Yeah. I know it's really easy to be frustrated when you can't see God's purpose. Um, Paul talks about that um, when he talks about the fact that we see through the glass dimly. In other words, we've got we've got human eyesight, and we're trying to figure out a supernatural God. Um, here's how I would encourage you: um, if you look back, Moses says that in Deuteronomy. If you look back at His faithfulness in your life, you'll see that His plans for us really are always good. That's not hyperbolic, it's true. And so I'd say sit for a minute, breathe. Um, I always dive into the Psalms because the Psalms are, they're, they're like God's diary, uh, God's people's diary. They record the, the dancing and the weeping of God's people. So you're not crazy if you're going through a difficult season, you're just human. So I, I dive into the Psalms. You'll find yourself there. You can find frustration there. I love that he didn't edit that out of Scripture. And then look back. Remember how he's already been faithful in your life. And those kind of seasons where you, you don't feel like you can see his hand, if y'all just keep putting one foot in front of the other, you'll get to a place where you go, oh my goodness. And you'll realize you've never been absent from his presence. You know, I, and I, I think of even what we've all gone through in the last few years, and I know you all intimately. So, um, and I, I look at people that have been really shaken by what's happened. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, wow, it's interesting because if you're called to Jesus, even ultimately a global pandemic, economic disaster, political, sociological, whatever all the challenges are in the world that everyone's confronting, pretty much, I know you guys, we didn't flinch in terms of our relationship with Jesus, our calling to no. Jesus, our calling to what we were doing. It's like, right. well, okay, I guess I'm at home. I'm on IG Live so, telling people okay. Jesus loves you. Right. Jesus yeah. has got a plan Doing for your life. You and are. I'm like, right. I wasn't I wasn't fretting no. about all oh, my ministry. So I, I never even thought about that. It was like, right. I, I, we're called. So how are we going to make this right. happen in this context? Right. So I think what we need to understand as a generation Paul says you're saved, to Timothy, you're saved and called. So, right. of course, we're all called to live on mission. Right. Stay-at-home mum, homeschooling 10 kids, That's right. global Grammy Award-winning singer, you know, massive media, media ministry, mm -hmm. um, whatever we call called. Dance. Dance, ministry. dance. <laughs> Lisa's got prophetic dance with ribbons. She excels. It's awesome. <laughs> but when I, I, I think the agonizing, so I'll go back to our generation, and I remember, at, and I've, you know, all of us have been in ministry meetings where, and particularly women, have lined up, and especially if they come from a tradition where a woman couldn't do anything like we're doing, right. the fear of God, like, I don't want to step out of the will of God. I don't want to dishonor God. I don't want to right. disrespect God. And I understand how that cripples and paralyzes you. Um, but I think if everyone really knew all of our stories, I never knew a woman could do what I'm doing. So I can't tell you, I used to lie awake at night. Yeah. and think I'm going to do this. Right. I didn't know right. this existed. Right. I thought because I came from a Greek Orthodox background, when I got saved, I thought I was going to be a nun because that's all I thought. Like Mother Teresa, I remember my mother going, Christina, because I, I, I enrolled in a nunnery. To, I thought I was going to go to a nun. And she goes, <laughs> and she said, I'm sorry. <laughs> and she said, Christina, no convent will have you. I said, Mom, I'll hang out with the monks. I don't know. I was like, I didn't know how I was going to do that life anyway. But I'm like, Fun. I thought, wow. Jesus has called me to himself. Damn therefore, so. I'll do oh. anything. I'm going to be oh, with, yeah. I thought I would be with Mother Teresa in India because yeah. I thought that's what you do if you uh, call. See that heart. Yeah, that yeah. heart. Right. That that's heart right. to do anything. There you right. go. That's Whatever. It. That's yeah. it. That That's what God's looking for. That's right. 
and then he can steer you into the specific thing right. he wants you to do. It's crucial to check the posture of our hearts. And that's an ongoing thing. It's not something, you know, we pray one time and say, Lord, give me a new heart, uh, 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 the right spirit, and it just stays there. It's something that we continue to check. The posture of your heart is to make sure you're um, in the posture of humility, the posture of hearing God's voice, the posture of um, thanksgiving, gratefulness, gratitude, and, and checking that, asking the Lord. I think the best way to check it is through prayer, always praying. Um, and, and that way you can stay focused because when your posture is right, then you're able to hear clear and it's easier to obey. So keep the posture is so important. Um, it's totally tied to you accomplishing what God has called you to do. It, it keeps you focused when your posture's right. Your eyes will stay on Jesus. I think if you're struggling to go deeper with God, just, just take a breath. And where is God right now? You know, the Bible says, draw near to me and I will draw near to you. That doesn't sound exhausting to me. That just sounds like a gentle response to a God who is waiting for you. So we don't need to strive and wrestle, or climb a mountain. We just need to thank Jesus. Thank you that you are there, that you are here waiting for me. Would you come and speak to me? I want to know you. And it's as simple as that. That's God's mercy to us. How does somebody recognize what they're called to do? You already gave us the best hint, and that is that you have to step forward. Mm -hmm. And God does say, I mean, Abraham, very first human call you see in Scripture is go. Yeah. Yeah. And he doesn't say, gaze at your navel and download and he, 52 and he said, sermons. Leave something. He said, leave something. Yeah. Leave something that wasn't necessarily bad. Yeah, You're right. comfortable here, and we're such creatures of comfort that I think we get in ruts, and then we just kind of try to wrap stuff around where we feel most comfortable instead of going, oh, wow, stepping out is going to involve sacrifice. It's going to involve where I'm not comfortable, mm -hmm. not what I'm bad at, like he didn't call you to music ministry. Um, I was actually studying call recently, and I was trying to remember this big word that I'd forgotten from seminary. And y'all have probably not forgotten it, but it's called monarchianism, which was one of the... Yeah, yeah I never knew it, so I couldn't I, get it. <laughs> it. It was one of the most popular pagan religions from the 3rd to the 7th century. At one point, it was the biggest religion that was, that was a, in conflict to Christianity. Bottom line is, they taught that God is higher than us. Well, that's true. That's straight from Scripture. But they said because Jesus sullied himself by becoming incarnate, anything physical is bad. Mm -hmm. And that where this comes back to calling is that's where you get that idea that still permeates culture that you have to lie on a bed of nails. Mm -hmm. You have to do something that's awful, that's hard, that hurts you. Because since we're inherently dirty as physical beings, God is spiritual, then you've got that dualistic idea that it has to be hard. We have to have pain in order for God to be pleased. That would be calling. That's where you get all the asceticism. And I think, ooh, we've still got a little bit of that then you mix that poison with, I've got to be famous and have a brand, and I've got to be an influencer. And I'm like, we've missed some of the simplicity of calling. Mm -hmm. Move. Go toward yeah. the Lord. There's a million things in here where he tells us what to do. Yeah. Love one another well. Be a servant. Yeah. Ful fulfill the prophets as best you can. It, it, for us in the New Testament, it's Make sure your life exemplifies the fruit of the Spirit. That's, right. That's a lot to do. That'll keep you real busy. You may not know I'm going to have a media ministry and preach all over the world, but you know, huh, right now I'm going to put tracks on cars because I have this passion and I want to do it to honor the Lord. So I'd say the very first step of identifying the track God has for you is move. Move toward the Lord and move toward the community that He currently has and you also, in. also, what? What are you good at? Right. 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 It doesn't what, have to be painful. And what do you like? Right. Exactly. Wow. And I think that That's people, good. like you said, they think they got to be miserable. Right. But, you know, I mean, what am I good at? Right. I tried to play a guitar. I thought, but my fingers were too short. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I, 
they turn my microphone off when I sing. In my own conferences, they turn it off. So I, nobody, <laughs> turn knows, it nobody knows what key I sing in. It's something that doesn't exist. It's like, yeah. just so, put it in B and I'll flatten it. <laughs> right. Right. But I wanted, I wanted to do it all. I wanted to sing. I wanted to play an instrument. You know, we see what somebody else is doing right, and we sure. want to do what they're doing. Right. But I'm a communicator. Right. I'm able to talk and get my point across. And so that's what I'm good at. And I enjoy it. Right, <laughs> so right. we, I, I think it can be so much simpler yeah. Yeah. than what people make it out to be. And that's, that's my heart when I wrote the book and it was my heart for today that people realize that you don't have to make yourself miserable looking. Right. Just right. be available. I think being available, but I also think, I think it, it finds you. Yeah, I right. think your that's purpose exactly and calls right. finds you. Mm -hmm. When you serve the Lord and you determine your, your number one priority is to please him. Right. Right. You know, the Bible says that if you seek the Lord with all your heart, you're going to find him. So I don't want you to be afraid to jump in with both feet. I don't want you to be afraid that God's not going to meet you where your faith is. He said, you call on me and I'm going to answer you and I'm going to show you great and mighty things that you don't even know. God has so much in store for you. Your calling and your purpose, if you seek after God, he's going to make your path straight. He's going to lead you and guide you. That's where he gave, gave us the Holy Spirit to be beside us, to be the helper, to help us along the way. He's never going to leave you and he's never going to forsake you because the journey is amazing. None of us really knew we would be here, right. you know, but we started out with just saying, yes, Lord, mm -hmm. you know, and um, the testing of your heart. And I, I think he always seems to call people into places that they really don't desire, mm -hmm. at, least, at least in my mm -hmm. uh, case. I never desired to be out front. Um, I never desired to sing out front. I've always loved to sing. Uh, but but I just love the Lord, you know, and right. so my my heart was, Lord, wherever you want me to be, right. because even though I, I'm known for singing, you know, 12 years ago, the Lord called me to pastor. Yeah. I'm like, no, really? Mm -hmm. So so he doesn't just cause us to do one thing. Exactly. Right. You know well, what I'm saying? Change. It can change. And on. so I, I removed myself from the music industry for almost eight years. And they were like, well, your career is going to be gone. I'm like, well, I didn't start this for my exactly. career in the right. first place. Right. God gave me that. And if he wants me to go back to it, I'll go back to it. And sure enough, eight years later, I went back to it and he took me higher than I've ever yeah. been. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, so your, your calling will find you if you're running after him. Right. That's it. That's, right. That's it. Right. And, and, and when you asked the question earlier, how do you recognize that you have your call? I think you recognize it by seeing the fruit right. of it. You know, um, I remember again, going back to singing my first solo, I was probably about eight years old. I didn't want to sing. They made me sing. I, I cried through the whole song. Aww. Oh my God. Uh. <laughs> and my parents could care less about me crying. It was That's like, right. you gonna sing it again and you're going to sing it again. <laughs> but, but at one point I realized people were crying and I realized some, somebody bigger, it, it wasn't my voice. God, God made it very clear at the beginning, it is not about your voice, yeah. right. but it was the spirit of God mm -hmm. that came in and I was like, okay, this is more than me. Right. <laughs> right. You know, and I think if we all realize that from the beginning, that it's somebody much bigger than you, but we're called just to, we're called, like you said, you said something early was so good. You just said, we're called to minister to him but also to to draw people to him. Yeah. He is personal representative. He is personal representative. Mm -hmm. And I think that is just, that's the biggest calling of all. Yeah. If, if any other call becomes bigger than that, I think we that's get right. confused. That's right. I would encourage anyone who's listening to be obedient to the Word of God because the, the plans that God has for you are always better than what you have for yourself. And so even if it's something that you don't desire, um, be obedient to the word of the Lord. Be obedient to his leading um, because he knows exactly what your purpose is in the earth and he knows how to get you there. You know, first and foremost, before you have any ministry, mm -hmm. 
you need a relationship yeah. with God. I was working at a church, and I was so proud of myself because I was working in ministry. And I just thought, oh, that's so great. I'd, I'd drive to the church in the morning. It was just, mm -hmm. and I remember when God said to me, you know, you're proud of yourself because you work for me, but the problem is you don't spend any time with me. And that turned my life upside down. And so since then, mm -hmm. my priority is always God first every morning. Mm -hmm. And then everything else has to come after that. That's good. You're not, you will not be a success at whatever you lay your hand to if you don't put God first and keep God first. And ministry. Mm -hmm can draw you away from God really quick so because you get so busy doing the ministry you forget. <laughs> and telling Amen. other people about God Amen. that you don't prioritize your own relationship right. with God. And before I get messages to preach to other people, mm -hmm. I always study the Bible for me. Mm. Right. And you know, with Wow. What do I need to change? Where do I need to grow? And uh, just mm. keep God first. Yeah. People watching today, keep God first. And if he's not first, get him back where he belongs. Because if he's not on the throne, nothing's going to work. Um, the best place to start with a relationship with God, first of all, um, this is a love story. It's not a rule book, so I'd encourage you to dive into Scripture. That's where God reveals Himself the clearest. But I would say just say to the Lord, even if it's just in the privacy of the car or pull over into a rest area or better yet, get like a really yummy drink with all kinds of caffeine and sugar. And then just say, God, will you please reveal yourself to me? I'm seeking you. I don't want a religion. I want a relationship with you. He promises in this love letter we call the Bible that if we seek him, he will be found by us. There's actually an even better promise, I think, in the Old Testament that says his love is so great for us that he reveals himself to people who aren't even seeking him yet. And so I'd say just be honest with God. You don't have to curate your emotions with him. Just say, I'm seeking you. Will you please reveal yourself to me? And then dive into this book. The Gospel of John is a great place to start. It'll tell you all about the life and ministry of Jesus, how much He loves you, but just take the next step. You don't have to understand all the multisyllabic theological terms. You don't have to understand the Bible or much less how to pronounce Habakkuk. Just take a step toward the Lord. You'll find that He's, he's actually waiting for you. You know, growing up, I, I was in a pastor's home just like you and and always wanting to be in the will of God, right? Yeah. Always. And so afraid you weren't. And, yeah, if it's <laughs> right. this hard being in the will of God, what is it like no. being out of it, you know? <laughs> so, so I remember my early years, it was like I would look at my mom as a pastor's wife and thought, I don't want to do that. Mm. I did not want to be a pastor's wife. <laughs> I love to sing, but I wasn't a soloist. I can, I can back you up. But I always knew I was supposed to be in the ministry. Mm -hmm. Well, we're all in the ministry. Absolutely. So right. that was a little lost on me. But I, I knew yeah. I had a call. Mm -hmm. Wasn't sure what that was, but I knew I wasn't going to be a pastor's wife. And I couldn't just go out and sing on the road by myself. Mm -hmm. What did that look like? But I was passionate on knowing that I was called. Mm -hmm. And then my mother-in-law walked in an elevator and I walked in with her mm -hmm. and I met my husband. Mm -hmm. And then now, now, now sitting here, mm -hmm. but I just really think that you, if you have a heart after God, that's it right there. And you, and you really want to please him and you really want, and, and you want to share Jesus with the world. God will, God will make those things happen that you can't, Amen. those doors open that you never dreamed possible. I never Amen. dreamed of doing this. I never, none of us did. Just the doors, the things that we can't do in ourselves, God will do for you. I'm thinking like people go, you know, did you always want to, want to run a global anti-trafficking organization? I'm like, I didn't even know it existed right. 15 yeah. years ago. See, so yeah. the things that I'm doing and some of the most influential things that I'm doing, mm -hmm. I never even knew they existed. And I'm thinking, as we go into the future and talking to you guys, some of the stuff we're doing, 
You never sat down and thought, oh, I'm going to host Better Together. We'd, it right. wasn't even in our there purview, was no the thing there for was that. No it was, model so who knows it. what God's yeah. got five years from now. Right. So you actually just need the same heart. That's it. Whatever God says, right. I'm in it with Jesus. Right. The task may change. My functions have changed. Yes. What right. I do and how I do it and who I do it to may change. Um, but the fact is he's called me to him, which means... Yeah. Anything I do is aligned to him. And I think whether, again, I come back to if you're a stay-at-home mother, if you're a single corporate woman running a company, our call is to him. If we get too caught up in what we do and how we do it, Mm -mm. then when things change, we're going to get really discombobulated because we, 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 we can't separate the call of God, meaning us with Jesus, with from what we do. From and we do. and that's why people then don't change and it gets obsolete. And I'm thinking, y'all, um, we have to continue. He keeps calling us. He keeps uh, calling. It doesn't right. stop. That Come call on. is a right. continuous a journey, ongoing right. journey. Well, for somebody who desperately wants God to work in their lives and you want to know what the first step is, the first step is, is to ask him to and to make yourself available and then do what God puts in front of you. It may be something very simple, but yet it can be very powerful in the kingdom of God. Like I went, just like Joyce, cleaning out the church, serving in the youth ministry. I never had prayed. I never felt a desire. I didn't have seven angelic visitations dancing on my duvet, (laughs) calling me to youth. But someone said, oh, we need, need help, help with youth. Right. Oh, more. I had a car right. so and I could available. put gas in my car. Exactly. So, available. and because I yeah. felt called to Jesus yes. and then the right. church said, I want someone to drive kids to youth and I had yes. a license, right. that was it. Right. That was my, and, and right. little did I know. Yeah. And then people go, well, Christine ran the largest youth ministry in Australia. Well, yes, but if I didn't Overnight pick up the success. kids when right. I never prayed right. about youth and I never right. cared about yeah. youth, I but been, I just, and there. to a degree, there is a large element of that still in my life now. It's just like, okay, oh, God, absolutely. what what am I doing today with yeah. who? Yeah. And then suddenly I'm like, oh, well, suddenly here I am somewhere in South America with all these yeah. millions of people. Right. And I just really said yes to right. driving Good. someone. And I yeah. drove Joyce yes. Meyer. Yeah, I just went, I was her driver. driver. That's how we met. I was like Are a youth you worker and they awesome. uh, they needed a female driver. And um and because of course there wasn't that many like pastors that were female and so right. I well, I at went... first I didn't want a driver yeah but she prayed that she would drive me oh wow and, yeah, and I said person. no I don't want a driver we'll get our own car so every day for five days she paid fifty five dollars to get her car detailed in oh. faith that she would drive me wow and the very last day before I got there I decided you know I think maybe I would like to have a driver and then. In our off time, we could see a little bit of Australia. And that's how I met Chris Kane. Pretty and thing. she was in this youth ministry. Amazing. And we had a ministry where we had a missions budget and we actually were looking for people, good people to support. There you go. And so before we left Australia, we gave her a sizable Very. offering. And we have been friends ever since. That is and amazing. didn't you buy a chauffeur or suit? So you'd look, because you and suit, when God gave you suit. breadcrumbs, you followed them with a passion. Wow. And I had to pick her up at 8 a.m. and I went at 5.30 because I didn't want to be late. And so <laughs> I was standing in the hallway and then Joyce opened the door to get her breakfast at 6.30 or something. And, and I looked the other way, freaking out because I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, I'm like the guest speaker and I'm like the youth leader, you know. And then um, she shuts the door, gets her breakfast. Then she puts the tray out about an hour later and I'm still standing. Standing there, and then she goes, "Are you waiting for me?" And I wanted to lie because I'm like, "Who would be standing here for three hours?" And I went, but then I knew I'd be driving her, so she knew I'd lie if I said it. So then she goes, "Um, come in." Then I'm freaking out because, like, what? Get, I mean, and it's Joyce Meyer. It's not just like get, you know, it's like, yes, and yeah. like I'm walking in, and here we go, this connection. But what I'm trying to say is. Uh, if if today you went, someone went, I'm called to be a global evangelist. And I went, okay, can you drive and pick up? Exactly. You think, right. oh, no, I'm a global right. evangelist. Because that's the kind of attitude that God will not put up with. Or people will just drive for access to the person. Like yeah, I was right. saying, like, it's it's God knows it all, so you can't trick him. Right. <laughs> he knows it all. Right. God is. You know, in Matthew chapter 4, verses 19 to 20, come follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish 
for people. At once, they left their nets and followed Him. You know, I love this scripture because Jesus just only once, He said, come follow me. And then He told them what He would make them. He said, I will make you. That word make in the Greek is to shape, to frame, to form, to construct. Jesus said, I will take ordinary fishermen. Today, you're fishing for fish, but I'm going to turn you into fishers of people. I'm going to shape you. I'm going to reorient you into what I've called you to be, fishers of people. And I love the way that the scripture says that immediately they dropped their nets. There was something so compelling, something so magnetic, something so awesome about Jesus that they didn't have a committee meeting. Um, should I follow him? What about the business? I mean, do you think they thought about that? What about our families? What about the business? What about my future? How much are you going to pay me? Didn't ask any of those things. He was so compelling that the Bible says immediately they dropped their nets and they followed him. I wonder today whether you would be willing to drop your nets, allow Jesus to shape you, to make you, to frame you, to form you, to construct you into a fisher of people. And all He requires is direct obedience. Come follow me, He says. Our job to drop our nets and follow. Knowing all of our stories, none of us started with the end in mind. I mean this in the right way. So we thought we'd arrived when Jesus called us to Himself. Come on. That's right. We were there. We did. That's right. yeah. And it's and like, I want this every day point. of my life. Yeah. I want this proximity yeah. and then I want to be obedient. And a large part of my obedience is not the sensational stuff that everyone applauds. It's the very painful stuff that I haven't wanted to do, but I've done, which is why I think your stories, like the shopping trolleys, Mm -hmm. You know, we laugh, but far and I, I doubt oh, yeah. to this day, Nick yeah. and I go to the supermarket where we won't put a trolley back because you what you've done, God, I mean, obviously it's your gift and who you are, but you've made God real in the 24 seven everyday there life. Right, so it's like go. this trolley going back honors and it honors the person. See, I couldn't go yeah. away to Bible school because I had three teenagers and a baby. Yeah. Right. And uh, so God literally taught me how to be a person of integrity yeah, right. and excellence mm -hmm. right. in the grocery store. Right. Right. And I would, one of the first things he dealt with me about is putting my shopping cart. I don't know if everybody would know what a trolley is. So uh, my shopping cart, you know, back, because everybody leaves them out in the parking lot, leaned against somebody's car. Well, I hate to say this, but it took me two, two years to get fully obedient to do that. Right. And so I literally got trained. I went to the school of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Come and on. everything yes. for me is yes. follow the Holy Spirit. Follow the That's, Holy Spirit. I didn't, yes. I tried to get around other ministers and have appointments <laughs> with them and they would get canceled. They weren't interested. Whatever God orders, he pays for. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Yes. And so whatever God has called you to do, he will provide whatever you need mm -hmm. right. to do it. And it's not just always money. Mm -hmm. When I first started teaching, I need, I mean, I got so busy. First of all, I didn't know anything. I had to study all the time, study the Bible, because I didn't, I mean, you can't teach if you don't know anything. Right. And I just needed help. I needed help with laundry. I needed help with my housework. I needed help with my kids. and. A friend of mine just said, I feel like God's put it on my heart to clean your house and to do your laundry and help with your kids. Wow. And she ended up being our first employee. And when I got to where I could pay her, her first salary was $50 a week. Wow. She still works for us now. <laughs> and see, God will provide yeah. everything you need. Yes, Lord. If he's called you to do something, yeah. he'll provide. That's good. And you'll always end up where God wants you to be. I'll tell you a funny story. When I first went on TV, I tried to get on TBN. They didn't want me. Laurie, so, I was not <laughs> in charge. Oh, said, you, you weren't. But it, it, this is funny. They didn't. I mean, no, nobody knew me. They didn't care. I didn't. I couldn't blame them. But I kept trying. And then one day TBN called and wanted our program. I thought I had died and oh gone to heaven. God. I was so, I remember awesome. how excited I was. I'm gonna be on TBN, I'm gonna be on TBN. And then here I am today. Yeah. 
and I'm welcome to come anytime I want to. And so beautiful. God gets you. Yes. Please understand you don't have to make yourself miserable trying to find the will of That's God right. for your life. Right. Just love God. That's what right. you know. That's right. Tell him what's in your heart, but be willing to do whatever he puts in front of you. Mm -hmm. And it may it probably will take longer than what you thought it would. But even part of that's part of the test yeah. that God gives you to see if you're going to be faithful or not. Well, you know, when God calls you to do something, the enemy will come up with all kinds of little excuses he'll put in your mind about why you can't do it. And sometimes some of the things we hear is, well, you're too young or you're too old. And I'll tell you, you're never too young and you're certainly never too old to do something amazing for God. The thing for you to remember is it's God that's doing the doing. And if he chooses to do it through you, then it doesn't matter what kind of a natural handicap you seem to have. He can overcome that and cause mighty things to happen through you. The Bible says in Ephesians 3.20 that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all, above and beyond all that we could ever hope to ask or think through the power that worketh in us. So God does it, but he does it through us. So trust him and make yourself available. Well, Miss Joyce, don't you think there's also, it's a test, but there's an apprenticeship. Yeah. Right. None of us could do what we're doing now at this age. At 20, we needed to build our, our spiritual muscles. And Chris and I always talk about how much we're grateful we started in youth ministry. Yeah. And I was just hoping I'd have enough gas money to get from one school right. to the next, talk right. about Jesus. But that formed my scaffolding. Right. It's yeah. more secure. So it doesn't matter if I'm in a small place or a big place because that, right. that I, I have that as right. an apprenticeship instead of just throwing me to something huge right. that I wouldn't have had the maturity for. Right. Timothy was young, but he also had Paul. That's right. Mm -hmm. Right there. Come on. That's right directing him and guiding him. You know, the Amplified Bible says that you're not to put a new convert in leadership. Otherwise, I love this, he'll become stupefied with pride. <laughs> That's what I said, I like stupefied with pride. And I, what I don't like to see is a young person put on a platform with nobody that they're accountable to Accountable. Accountable. and nobody that's mentoring them so or watching over them. I've seen so many of them get into trouble. Me too. And, and one, one man, I asked him, who were you accountable to? Who was watching over you? And he said, nobody. Wow. You know, he said, I wish I would have had you or, you know, mm. and to be honest, if he would have, he wouldn't have. Now he's not even in ministry anymore because he fell into sin. And you, so you, you have to be we have yeah. to be careful as leaders that we don't just put somebody in a position right. Right. Because, because they have a gift Come on. if they don't have any maturity yes. to go along with it. You know, I think accountability is so important when it comes to walking in our calling because accountability, when it's done right, actually is what God uses to help keep us on track with our God-given purpose and our God-given destiny. I think when someone holds you accountable, it's saying, look, I believe this is what God has called me to do. And then a person that holds you accountable, holds you accountable to the choices you make that would keep you going in the direction you need to keep going in, in order to get to the place that you believe that God has brought you in. It's just a great guardrail. It creates great checks and balances to ensure that the decisions you make, that the actions you take um, are really keeping you on track with your God-given purpose. It's actually a safety thing for you. It's not something to hinder you from the purpose of God. I know that as I have had different seasons of my life and gone to people that are further down the journey than me and said, look, this is what I think the Lord's called, then those people have helped keep me on track with my goals, with my purpose, and then have also been a springboard if I want to talk things through or, you know, if I've faltered or failed in some way, I've had someone that's been able to get me back on track, help me to get back up and keep going towards my God-given purpose. So accountability is actually a really great thing to keep you accountable so that you can get to where God has called you to be. Well, I hope and pray that the people watching have learned something and I hope you've relaxed a little bit about the call on your life. Just make yourself available. You don't, you don't have to be 
able, you just have to be available because God can make you able. And so I pray in Jesus' name for everybody that watched today that you will do what God wants you to do, be all that God wants you to be, enjoy it, and not get all frantic about what it is. Just be available and God will let you know what and when he wants you to do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You know, the Bible says that this life is but a vapor. And when you really get right down to it, we only have a few years here on earth. I pray that you have a steadfast determination to follow God, to jump in with both feet, to say, I'm going after it no matter what, because God is faithful. It is His character. He will never fail you. Love never fails, and God is love. He is for you. He's not against you. He's with you. You're not alone. He loves and He adores you. He has your name tattooed on his palm. And I just pray that you just have the tenacity that, that nothing can stop what God wants to do on the inside of you to help you and to move you forward and take you on, take you on the destination of a lifetime. That's his journey for you. You know, for young people that are ready to step up and into their calling in Christ, I just want to encourage you, stay close to Jesus. Develop the good habits now that are going to sustain you throughout all your life. Be in the Word of God every single day. Be in the house of God. Be committed to a, a local community. Have great, great friends around you that are going to help take you to your purpose and destiny. Have a passion for the presence of God and worshiping God. So develop spiritual practices, spiritual disciplines. And let me tell you why they're going to help you. Because when you get to my age, which is like decades ahead of where you are right now, you will find that the practices that you've practiced have helped formed and shape and frame you. They keep you connected to God in a very dynamic way. We have a generation of wonderful, amazing young people coming up. And my prayer for you is that you will not be deceived in these times that we're living in because they are definitely intense. And that you will always have a tender heart toward God and follow Him and do things exactly the way He wants them done. Here's what I would tell you. I wish somebody had told me this when I had tight skin and high metabolism. It gets better. Walking with Jesus does not get more boring. It doesn't get stiffer. It doesn't even get harder. It gets better. You begin to believe bigger that He loves you, that He's for you. Y'all stay the course. You haven't even had dessert yet. It just keeps getting better. Proverbs 27, 23 and 24. Know the state of your flocks and put your heart into caring for your herds, for riches don't last forever and the crown might not be passed to the next generation. So when I think about this, I mean, first of all, um, flocks, I don't have any flocks, but what that is meaning is what you have, what the riches, what is in your hand. Like what is it that you get to, to manage? And it says, put your heart into caring for what you have. And I feel like so many times we get distracted by what other people have. We look at what they have or we want something bigger. And what God is saying, can you just be faithful with what's in your hand? Don't get distracted by perhaps the wealth or the riches or whatever somebody else you know might have. Um, I think sometimes we get um, distracted by the dream in our heart and so we overlook what's in our hand. And the reality is we will get to the dream in our heart by being faithful with what's in our hand. And so that's just kind of the encouragement that I see in this verse. And because the last part of that verse is about a crown, you know, otherwise may not be passed to another generation. So I actually have to live my life taking care of what's in my own hand so that what I have can be passed on to a generation. So being faithful to steward the faith that's in my heart so I can pass the faith unto a generation, being faithful to steward the relationships so that I, the relationships that can continue on in generations. So it's just being mindful. You know, what I see is just being mindful about what's in my hand today because it will impact a generation. 
The start of a new year is a time to reflect on God's goodness and stir our faith for the year ahead. Our prayer for you this coming year is that your heart is filled with expectant hope and supernatural joy. And from our family to yours, Happy New Year!